Good day, saints. I'm so excited to be with you. We are currently in session number 10 of Fighting for Our Nation. I'm just so excited about what God is doing with the saints and He is raising them up and He is building His church. All right, we're dealing with session 10 and today's topic is entitled The Shoes of Peace. And we're dealing with the armor of God, so let's just pray as we get together. Father, I pray right now that as we come into this session, Lord, that you are going to lead us, guide us, and direct us by your Spirit. Lord, I pray for a supernatural revelation to flow and understanding to come to us in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that we are going to not only know your word, but Lord, we are going to apply your word and we are going to do what you are calling us to do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you right now that we are going to be the people that you have called us to be. Lord, we are going to stand up strong and solid. And Lord, that we are going to fight for our nation in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. All right, folks, I want us to go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. And this is the scripture that is our core scripture. And I want us to read it. All right, we're dealing with the armor of God. All right, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to do to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you, are able, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all of the saints. All right. So now I want to just remind you that we are dealing in our basic phase of this course. This course is divided up into two sections. Basics. And then we start going into focusing on what the enemy is doing. Right? Remember, basics is about me. In other words, what do I need to do to get prepared for the battle? Okay? And these are really important. The principles I'm teaching you right now will help you overcome the devil already in your own right. And so when you do that, you then have nothing in common with the devil. And it helps you fight the battle a lot easier. All right, the problem with most Christians is this. We fight the devil, but we keep the door open and he keeps coming in the back door. And so constantly we are busy sorting stuff out in our own homes where I'm teaching you the principles on how to close the back door. Okay, so that we can just focus on our areas, our suburbs, our businesses, whatever we need to do. All right, so I want us to go and look at the shoes of peace. Right, that you are now... Um, prepared, you got your, your feet that are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, what does that mean? How does this operate in my life? First of all, the Bible says that our, our shoes should be uh, shod with the gospel of peace. Now, how do I do that? It means wherever I walk, all right, your feet always show you your direction, where you are going, your walk. Your walk has to be done under the unction of peace. So in other words, where I have peace, I walk. Now, the word peace is very interesting. Okay? The word peace, what does peace mean? It means to join. It means to be one with. It means a quietness. It means a rest. And it means that you walk in prosperity. It's a very interesting word. Now, what is that? Uh, how does that translate into my situation? Let me tell you what it does. When you have peace, you are moving from a place of rest. You are being led by the Spirit of God. You are not being driven by a need or a circumstance. I want you to listen very carefully. Jesus Christ was never driven by a need. He was always led by the Spirit of God. Let me give you an example. Lazarus was dying. Right? And 
his sister comes to Jesus and calls him and said, listen, you better come, Lazarus is dying. And so Jesus gets called and off he goes and guess what? He gets delayed. He gets delayed. He rocks up three days late. He did not, he did not react to the need. And I want you to understand that is how God wants us to operate. I also want you to understand there will always be a need. There will always be issues and trouble in our nation and any other world. But the purpose of us being on this earth after we've got saved is so that we can restrict what Satan wants to do on our earth, on our, in our nation. As Christians, we can restrict the work until we leave. Now, I want to just say that God is busy, all right, helping us understand this. But as times get closer to the Lord Jesus Christ's return, we are going to see more lawlessness. We're going to see all sorts of things happening. But listen carefully. You cannot be moved by the need. You have to be led by the Spirit of God. Now, what are the aspects that peace is going to bring in my life? How do I move from being pressurized into something to being led by God? Because this is something that we need to learn as the body of Christ. Every single one of us need to know when God wants you to intervene or when God does not want you to intervene. So let's have a look at the word, uh, the word peace. The world longs to find peace, but it can only be found when you live in Jesus Christ, when you've given your life to Jesus Christ. You see, the world cannot find this peace that we are talking about. This is where Jesus Christ was in the midst of the storm and he had peace in it. Jesus was not driven by any circumstance. If you are in the world, you don't have the ability to have this inner peace. And so therefore, you're always going to strive for it. How many times have you heard of testimonies where people try everything to find this peace and they never do until they meet the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, I need you to understand that this is very important for the believer. Because now you have a tool that the world does not have. You have an ability that the world does not have. And what is that? To know which direction to go in. To know what to do next. Now, it is not moved by circumstances. It's not moved by your surroundings. It's moved by the Spirit of God inside of you, leading you. Now, what does peace do for you? Philippians 4 verse 7. Now, remember, this is the peace that the world doesn't have. They don't understand it. They can't comprehend it. It's like when the boat was sinking and the disciples came to Jesus and said, Don't you care for us? Are you going to let us drown? Of course, Jesus was not going to let anybody drown. So the world, remember those disciples weren't saved yet. And I want you to see what that peace can do for us as believers. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7, it says this. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. In other words, this peace doesn't make logical sense. In other words, you could be in a situation, let's say you're in your business and your business is going to go bankrupt. And yet you've got total peace about it and saying God's going to come through for me. And everybody said, but you should be panicking. You should have sleepless nights. No, because you have a peace that passes all logic, okay? All natural understanding, natural reason. And you must understand that the people saying that, most of them are unborn again. They're not born again. They're unbelievers. So therefore, they don't even understand what you are saying. Now, that peace is what we are after. But let's see what that peace does. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, 
will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. I want you to see this. That peace forms a fort around your heart and your mind. I want you to look at the picture on the screen right now that you get a good understanding of this. Remember this. That peace will guard your mind from fear. Will guard your mind from going negative. And that is the peace that we are talking about. It does not make any logical, rational sense whatsoever. But you know like you know like you know that you're going to be okay. And it's the peace of God that's going to do this. Okay? I want to just give you an example of what I'm talking about. It was like the time when my daughter got stabbed and I got to the, to the beachfront and there she was, a lump in somebody's arm and obviously I initially got a shock. When I got there, the doctor didn't even have time uh, to explain everything. He says, I'm rushing into the hospital right now to save your child. You're either in or out of this vehicle. I dived inside. I mean, my vehicle was still parked in the middle of the road and so I'm off with this doctor. But when I got into that van, a peace came over me. <coughs> Excuse me. A peace came over me. And it was not one of sitting down and saying, listen, I am fearing for my daughter's life. What came over me was, God is in control. I have peace of this thing. And my first words to my daughter was, you will live and not die. I total peace that she was going to live. And when you speak to Jade and speak to her about the situation, you will see and she'll tell you, she knew like she knew like she knew that she was going to survive this. Then I went into battle mode to get the physical symptoms to line up with what is in my heart. I never once had fear. I knew like I knew that God was going to do something supernatural here. Everybody else around me was panicking, particularly the medical uh, fraternity, because it was so severe touch and go and everybody was on high alert and it was just chaos. I had total peace. And I just kicked into warfare mode. And I said, God, it's time to change the circumstances. And this is what we are talking about. That peace totally guarded my heart despite a major shock. Let me tell you something. It's a major thing when you've had your child stabbed. And the doctor is saying they're going to now try and fight for her life. It's no joke. But I want to tell you right now, despite the shock, despite the evidence and the facts given to me at the time, despite all of that, I had total peace in that environment. I had total peace on how God was going to move and get us to where we need to go. And so I knew that as I was moving forward, I was going to operate in peace with the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I was going to see the outcome. And so I need you to understand that Jesus Christ brings this peace. John chapter 16, verse 33. It says this, These things I have spoken to you, Jesus is speaking, that in me you may have peace in the world. Sorry, that you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Now what does that mean? It means that no matter what's happening with the world, when the world is bringing tribulation against you, you can have peace in the midst of that storm. I want to say, some of us have been through some trauma, uh, traumas, and we can have peace in the midst of the storm that was raging. All right, we've just come out of COVID, and COVID was a traumatic experience for everybody. 
And I want to tell you that we can have peace in the midst of that storm. I want to say that I had total peace right through COVID. I had total peace that God was in control and God is going to get us through this. And He has. We stand today celebrating the goodness of the Lord. We stand today celebrating what God has done in so many lives during COVID. How much the church has grown spiritually across South Africa during COVID. It gave us time to get into the Word. It gave us time to see what God's Word really says. So I want you to know that this peace will take you through any form of tribulation or trial. And this is a very, very important uh, thing to have in your life. Alright, now, how do I get this peace? How do I get this peace? How do I get to the place where I know like I know that I'm okay? I want you to go to Isaiah 26 verse 3. And this is so, so important. This verse is the key. And I want you please to take note of this and practice it. Isaiah 26 verse 3. You will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on you. Because he trusts in you. If you keep your heart and mind focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. You will have peace operating in your life. And you will see the victory take place in Jesus' name. Now, this peace is going to always bring you into victory. Alright? You are going to come into victory. Because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Peace of God must always rule my life. The peace of God must always rule my life. Colossians chapter 3 verse 15 says this. And let the peace of God rule your hearts, to which also you were called in one body and be thankful. Let the peace of God rule your heart. Now, let's make this practical. All right? Every decision that you need to make has to be done in peace. There are many, many times when something in the natural looks one way and yet behind the scenes it's not that way. You have to make your decisions based on whether you have peace or not. So two things I need you to focus on. Number one, in the time of trials and, and tribulation, or whatever it is that you're going through, some trauma, and, you, and you're looking and fear wants to come, you say, God, I call on the peace of God right now. I thank you, Lord God, for a supernatural peace. And God will give you peace in the midst of that storm. All right? And so in the midst of it, you're going to be okay, you're going to have peace, and you're going to know God's going to get you through this. The second thing is, you need, and this is what we do as a family, the number one rule in our family. How do I make a decision? Whatever it is that I need to do, how do I make a decision? The question is very simple. Do I have peace about it or not? Do I have peace about it or not? Now I want to give you a testimony as an example. Okay, And I want to show you how God can direct your steps just by peace. The biggest decisions that we have ever, ever made as a family has only been done by peace. We were sitting in Port Elizabeth. And we'd just come here for a short time. I just, we had lost everything. We had moved to PE. And we're sitting there. And God... Uh, prompts us to move to Kenton. Now you must understand we have no income. I have a total of 2,000 Rand in my bank account. I have three children and a wife. 
And I said to God, do we move to Kenton? And both Janine and I had peace in our heart to go and do this. What were we going to do there? I have no idea. Had no work, nothing. All I knew that I had to carry on writing the topics for the curriculum, the 250 topics that most people know about. And so I said to God, God, are we going to go? And uh, Total peace and we must leave. And so I found a place to rent, 1,500 rand. And the day, at, a, at the end of a, the June-July school holidays, and um, we were going to move. Schools are opening, on, I don't know the exact day, but they say, say the schools open on a Tuesday. All right. And Monday, I went down to Kenton to go and take a trailer of the little bit of stuff that I had, a few mattresses and beds, and said, okay, I'm going to Kenton, that's it. I put it in somebody's garage, came back to Port Elizabeth, and Tuesday we were fetching the children. They had to say goodbye. That's right, the Monday when I went down, they said goodbye to the school friends. Tuesday we were off to Kenton. On the way to Kenton, now you must understand, I've got peace. God made a way for me, and he said, you will have peace. You'll be guided by this peace. So as I'm going to Kenton, now you must understand, we get to Kenton, we then uh, enroll our children into school, and then because it's almost like a farm school, all the uniforms have to go be bought at Pep stores in Port Alfred. So I had to go further to Port Alfred, and by now it's already 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock in the afternoon, just before uh, Pep stores close. I get all of the, the, the uh, um, what do they call it, uh, the, the uniform. And we're on our way back, and, I, and on the way, I get a phone call and said, sorry, you can't have the accommodation anymore. So we have nowhere to stay. Now, I've moved my family. I've used the last bit of money now to buy the uniforms and stuff, just the basics, just to get us going. And so now I'm saying, God, what do I do? But yet, I have peace in the midst of the storm. I want to tell you what happened. The estate agent, somebody got hold of the estate agent, the school got hold of somebody, because I phoned them and I said, do they have a caravan park or something that can just sleep for the night? I'll try and sort this out in the morning. They said, okay, well, we can just ask some estate agent if they know something. The estate agent said, no, they might have something for me. Ended up that we got into this house that was fully furnished on the river, Millionaire's Avenue of Kenton, overlooking the river and overlooking the sea. And what had happened was that owner of that, that house allowed us to stay in that house for five years with a rental of 2,000 rand a month. Fully furnished. I want to tell you, God turned our whole situation around and they gave me those five years to write the topics without any distraction. Where I could sit down and take time and get into God's word properly. And so we were guided by peace, but circumstances could have stirred up fear. Peace of God guarded my heart. The peace of God guarded me in my decisions. The peace of God guarded me in traumas and crises. And so the peace of God will show you which direction to go in. And so therefore you need to be ready for this. You need to be ready when you're going to make a decision, say, if it's two choices, God, do I do this? And thinking, feeling hard, is it a yes or a no? Do I have peace about this or not? Or the other one, okay, I'm not going to do this. Do I have peace or not? Now, there are so many uh, times that I have been in situations where I have seen something that looks so good, so good, but yet I don't have peace about it and I'll turn it down. Let me give you an example. A business person came to me once and said to me, listen, and this was many years ago, and said, listen, I want to pay for you to go overseas. And for, I think it was three weeks, all expenses paid to go to every major spiritual conference that you would like to go to across the States. 
Now let me tell you something. As a younger person, I was I think I was in my thirties then. And as a younger person, that is like a dream come true to go and meet your heroes. You know, these heroes of the faith that you've been following for years. And you want to be able to get into that conference and particularly let them lay hands on you. You know, get this impartation if you can get it. And everything in my flesh said, yes, let's do this. But I had no peace. I didn't go. But it turned out that this person was buying and paying off the ministers so that he could manipulate them further down the road. And God protected us because of peace. So, peace of God has got to rule our lives. All right? Live life that is guided by peace. Live your life guided by peace. And what is the result? That you could have a strong testimony. All right? I want you to go to Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. I can give you testimony upon testimony where the peace of God led me into the right situation so that I never ever made a mistake. So let's have a look at this thing of your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Our feet are guided by peace. In one, uh, Luke chapter 1, 79, it says this. To give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death. To guide our feet into the way of peace. To guide our feet where to go is directed by peace. And then secondly, we need to be ready to preach the gospel in and out of season. Alright, where we have peace about it, we preach it. There are times when God will say to you, don't preach here. You think it's not so? I'll tell you what, go read the book of Acts. It says the Holy Spirit restricted them from preaching the gospel in certain places. So you must be sensitive. Do you have peace to preach the gospel? In 2 Timothy 4, 2, it says, Preach the word, ready in and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort, with all, all long suffering and teaching. So in other words, you need to be ready if God says preach. Be ready to go and do what God has called you to do, whatever he's called you to do. So I want you to understand this. Our biggest decisions are simply made by peace, whether they have peace or not. So there's four elements that I want you to focus on as a summary on peace. Number one, there's an inner peace inside of me. All right, I have an inner peace. Number two, I'm going to have peace in the storm. If things go wrong around me, like what happened with Jade, it was a storm. And I had peace in that situation. I can give you countless. There's many. Number three. I'm guided by peace. That I had to go to Kenton and move there. And it worked out 100% at the end. And number four. I need to minister peace. In other words, bring the gospel to people. So that they could also have this inner peace. And so I trust. That as we prepare ourselves. And we are part of our basic training that we will not forget that Jesus Christ wants to use us, equip us, and go and bring a testimony that will change people's lives in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, I pray right now that you're going to help each and every one of us. Lord, as we come and we submit to you, Father, I pray that peace will guide and guard our hearts in Jesus' name. Lord, that you will guide us in your presence. Guide us in your ways. And Lord, guide us into what we need to do next. Thank you, Lord, that you are directing our paths. And we will do what you have called us to do. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, God bless you, folks. I trust that you have an awesome day and an awesome time getting ready for next week. Remember this. We are in the journey. We are fighting for our nation. So God bless you. See you soon. Amen.